Good morning. And good morning to those of you on Facebook and internet. We're glad you're with us. Today is the 13th Sunday after Pentecost, and we will be hearing about the cost of discipleship. What is the cost that Jesus asks of us to be his disciples?
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Direct us, O Lord God, in all our doings with your continual help, that in all our works begun, continued, and ended in you, we may glorify your holy name, and finally, by your mercy, bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from the 30th chapter of Deuteronomy. Moses speaks to the Israelites who are about to enter the land promised to their ancestors. In this passage, he lays out the stark choice before them. Choose life by loving and obeying the Lord or choose death by following other gods. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity death, and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord, 
your God that I am commanding you today by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways and observing his commandments, decrees and ordinances. Then you shall live and become numerous and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him and holding fast to him, for that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give you to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. The word of the God, the word of God, Lord of life. Thanks be to God. We now read Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's teaching day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season, with leaves that do not wither, everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which blows away. Therefore the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner of the counsel of the righteous. The second reading is from Philemon chapter 1 to 21. While Paul was in prison, he was aided by Onesimus, a man who had run away from Philemon, a slave owner and a Christian friend of Paul. Paul told Onesimus to return to Philemon and encouraged Philemon to receive Onesimus back as a Christian brother. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Aphia, our sister, to Archippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace to God from the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I will also thank God because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though, I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love and I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly, he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to both you and me. I am sending him that is my own heart back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent in order that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason he was separated from you for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, and a beloved brother, especially to me. But how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. 
I say nothing about you owing me, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have the benefit from your obedience. And I am writing to you knowing that you will do even more than I say. Word of God, word of life. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 14th chapter. Jesus speaks frankly about the cost of discipleship. Those who follow him should know from the outset that completing the course of discipleship will finally mean renouncing all other allegiances. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider where he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Ever since we were children, when we attended Sunday school, but probably especially in our teenage years, we heard what we read in our gospel today. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. We usually would probably hear this in a more positive way. Whoever carries the cross will be my disciple. And just what on earth does that mean? Of course, as children and as teenagers, it's quite, um, it's quite an ominous thought and somewhat frightening. Not only because of the responsibility it places on a person, but the gruesomeness of the image. We picture Jesus carrying the cross, bruised and bloody, broken, tripping every step. How does that translate today? When we read, whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Translations primarily do away with the actual cross image and describe what it means metaphorically that is not quite so literally. One writer described what it is like being the disciple of Jesus, that is, what it is like to carry our own cross. He said it's loving God wholeheartedly and walking in God's ways. Meaning loving God wholeheartedly and walking in God's ways is doing justice and bringing loving kindness. And Jesus tells us in our gospel for today just how to bring into our world justice and loving kindness. For which of you intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it. Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, this fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king, 
going out to wage war against another king will not first sit down and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. Then Jesus ends with, so therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. This is what Jesus means when he says, whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Everything Jesus says in relation to what it means to take up our cross and follow him is related to cost. He refers to the cost of building a tower, the cost of the army in a war. But the cost Jesus is really talking about is the cost within ourselves, related to not only possessions, but relationships. What in our possessions, what in our relationships keeps us from following Christ fully? When we find a dissonance between following Christ or following what is expected by our family and friends, do we do things or think things that follow Christ or that follow what is expected by family and friends? It can be subtle, can't it? Once again, we reach for Paul's admonition to pray without ceasing. This is what he meant. He did not mean to stay on our knees or head bowed unceasingly but to have a running conversation in our head and heart with God. Have God as our companion in thought, word, and deed. So what is Jesus referring to when he talks about the cost of following him? The cost when we follow Jesus is the loss of self. What is the gain when we follow Jesus? We know the answer, don't we? Companionship, God, through the Holy Spirit as our companion in thought, word, and deed.
confess our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. We pray for the church around the world and for the mission of the gospel. Refresh the hearts of your people, deepen our understanding of every good thing we share, and strengthen our partnerships in the faith. God of grace, for the well-being of the earth and all its creatures, for trees and forests, for all that will yield fruit this season, and for streams and other bodies of water, God of grace. For the nations and those in authority, for the elected leaders of our towns, states, and country, and for international organizations. Grant wisdom to those who govern and raise up citizens who make decisions in the best interest of their neighbors, God of grace for all in need, for those who suffer from disease, who struggle with homelessness or food insecurity, for those whose family life is difficult, and for all in this community who need your care, especially those we name now aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, for this community of faith, for all our labors, begun, continued, and ended in you, that they glorify your holy name. Bless your people with the strength to live into their many vocations for the sake of the world. God of grace. Please join me in the next petition. For Griffith Lutheran Church, help us to use our many blessings to grow our church, to make a difference in our lives and in our community. Help us that we may grow Christ-centered relationships in our communities through love and service. God of grace, for all the saints who confessed God's name, we give thanks for the saints who now rest from their labors. Give us faith like them to love you with all our hearts and by your mercy bring us to everlasting life. God of grace, gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you.
Gracious God, in your great love, you richly provide for our needs. Make of these gifts a banquet of blessing and make us ready to share with all in need. Through Jesus Christ, who sets a table for all. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. give you thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word, inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Holy Spirit and of the Virgin Mary. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering he ordered, in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to you a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death, to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church and gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith in truth that we may praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church both now and forever. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ invites you to this table. Come, taste, and see.
for those of you who are taking communion in the pew, the body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. The announcements are in your bulletin. I love that song. Sherry, thanks. Um, God's work, our hands. Sunday is actually next Sunday. Um, however, our project will be on Thursday. We'll meet here at 3.30 to help the Northwest Indiana Food Bank distribute uh, food through their mobile market so uh, from 4 to 6. So if you could please be here by 3.30 so we can receive our instructions and get our shirts, um, that would be great. You can see me if you have any questions. Our September mission is the Visiting Nurses Association of Northwest Indiana. Um, the, uh, let's see, sorry. <laughs> There's fellowship after church as, as we've uh, restarted that, so please feel free to stay. The inspired book study, inspired by Rachel Held Evans, um, will begin later the month. I do have the materials. If you're interested in that, please see me. We could use some help with the sign-up sheet for ushers. Um, the other sign-up sheets are looking really good, so if you would consider um, uh, being an usher on Sundays, that would be helpful. And next Sunday is Rally Sunday, and I believe Denny has something to announce. Yes, as Kerry said, just as a reminder, next Sunday is Rally Sunday, and we invite everyone to be a part of our festivities. We have fun, food, and fellowship. Now, let's see, let's put that in the right order. Probably put food first, right? <laughs> okay, but we have food. We're having hot dogs, hamburgers, and drinks. Those will be supplied. Uh, there are sign-up sheets on the wall uh, across from the office. There are a lot of sign-up sheets, so make sure you check those out on the way out this morning. Uh, but sign up for some of the things that we are looking for to help us as we pitch things in for that meal. Um, on a more serious note, we are still looking for help as far as teachers and helpers and leaders in our Sunday school classes. If we don't teach them, how will they know? Key word is we. Now. Everybody looks at the other and, well, I've done my part. Now it's somebody else's turn to step up. Don't see too many people taking that step. So we're on crunch time now. In order for us to start our Sunday school and start off with a full slate and get in full swing, we need some helpers. So hopefully you have prayerfully considered this and now you are ready to take that uh, commitment. When God gave us, when Christ gave us the uh, Great Commission, he didn't say, well, you and you and you. What did he say? Really? Go ye therefore. Everybody, everybody, and teach and preach and baptize. So it's our duties. It's our calling. It's our allegiance to God to do those things so we are looking for people to be that part so if you are interested in doing any of those things or if we'd like to help out and do anything to help us please see me because this is our last week we want to start off next on the the Sunday after which would be the 18th that'll be our first Sunday school classes and we want to start off with a full slate of uh, teachers and all of the classes that we have and as Kerry mentioned, make sure you check out on the sign-up sheet across from the uh, office. Um, Kerry has materials for her class. I have materials for my class. So see us if you need the materials for any of those classes. Uh, also, there are other sign-up sheets so we can get materials ordered for those. So check those out and hope to see you next Sunday for the festivities and the fun and the games. And then we'll see you the following Sunday on the 18th as we begin our Sunday school for the this coming year. Thank you.
please stand. Carrie and I will be doing our part for Rally Day. We will have our robes on. <laughs> so we do invite you to fellowship uh, afterwards for uh, refreshments. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Trinity, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love.